producer, engineers, wailing, gnashing his teeth over here, uh, trying to get on the air live this morning. Uh, Viewpoint, the program of personalities, politicians, and perspectives. We might have two of the three. Uh, yes, go ahead, dear. Well, it, you know, you're th you're thinking I'm being interruptive, but you oh, know. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Buzz. Well, <laughs> I just want to explain that I have a reputation to uphold. Uh, I have a reputation as a motor mouth, and if I don't keep working at it, you know, I might lose well, my place on the food chain. You're honing, you're honing your skills, my dear. That works out very well. Thank you. I was working at that. Well, you're a little, you're a little John up to Minnesota to celebrate your brother's birthday. Did you good? So you're back here ready to oh. rock and roll this morning. Yeah, I saw him over the hump. The yeah. boy's, the boy is seventy now. He's just a kid. That's my younger say. brother, by yeah. the way. <laughs> yes, uh huh. Ah, uh, kudos. Say, we had some folks, some pretty dedicated folks, uh, start to run from Lincoln to Peoria. For the St. Jude benefit. Oh gosh, yes. Uh, now, that's a big kudo, Angie. Uh, that's I've a big deal. Before. There was a lot. Have of, you? You have done that. Did you really? Well, if I had a hat on, I'd tip it in wow, your direction, wee. my dear. Yeah. I only made it seven miles of the. Whoa! Whole wait a minute! Thing, only seven miles. That's a big deal. In short increments. <laughs> that's a big deal. Well, there are some people they, who are serious. Uh -huh. I just learned that that's how they do that. You know, um, because they started where in at the jail. Uh, we started the, at the jail. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. The uh -huh. They yeah. come through here from way south. Oh yes, oh, but this was a local Memphis, group that started yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they pick them up, the Lincoln people up at the jail. Mm -hmm. Doesn't yeah. sound very good, does it? <laughs> <laughs> at the police station. If they do it the same way they've done it in the past, they they yeah, yeah. it's Memphis to Peoria, and right. then there's all small communities that join into they come that. Into they come into Peoria, right? Yeah, they yeah. come into Peoria. Well, it's a big deal, and and uh, hats off to those folks who okay. do that and, and right. compete in that. It's not competition. It's, it's a matter of, and they, there's a lot of money raised. Lots of money oh. raised and so much coordination that, that goes on. They put a lot of work into that. I was just, okay. you know, I was just a runner. I didn't, you know, I raised some money and ran, and that was it. Well, there's Angie a said lot, lot she only it. ran seven miles. Well, uh, That's seven miles more than I've ever that's run. That's a big deal, dear. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, congratulations to those. And I note in this morning's paper where we have John Harnicky's grandson, John Noah. We're only 15. Noah's not a resident of this area. He lives down in the southern part of the country, I think, or down around St. Louis. I forget. Get the article and take another look. Anyway, young Noah, 15, has attained the uh, Eagle Scout uh, degree here, so to speak. And uh, that, that's a big deal at, uh, at any age, but at 15, it's, it's a little bit remarkable. So, uh, John, congratulations to that young grandson. That's a great thing. I had a, an interesting happening last Friday at work. Um, Joanne McCullough is the president of the ALMH Auxiliary Board. And uh, she and I were tour guides for 50 children between the ages of 10 and 16 from China. Oh. We toured them around, and then one wanted to go into the gift shop and buy a candy bar or something, which, of course, gave everybody else an idea to go into the gift shop and buy something. And um, it was it was uh, it was an interesting experience. The kids were very nice, very polite, quiet. Had an interpreter, which was blessing. And uh, it was a it was a good experience. They were all staying out at Lincoln Christian University, and they were touring the U.S. of A. and trying to hone their English a little bit, which was a good thing because I my my Chinese wasn't very finely tuned. <laughs> uh, we probably ought to get Keith uh, up uh, to talk about this uh, relationship that they're establishing with the uh, folks in China, uh, make an interesting program. So let's. Uh, you tell the program arranger that we ought to do that. I'll right? just I'll just pass that right okay. along. You betcha. All right, thank you. Uh, we're going to introduce our guest here in just a minute. I the soapbox just came in uh, through the door, so I stand up on the soapbox now. The uh, uh, this is a word about our congressman. A word to them, and it says, "Entitlements, my aunt Mary." Well, that's not exactly what they said. They said something else, but 
said entitlements. My I paid for cash, my cash for Social Security insurance. Just because they borrowed my money doesn't make my benefits some kind of charity or handout. Congressional benefits like free health care, outrageous retirement packages, I repeat that, outrageous retirement packages, 67 paid holidays, three weeks paid vacation, unlimited paid sick days, now that's welfare. And they have the nerve to call my retirement entitlements. Oh, ho, ho. We now step down from the soapbox and then you introduce our guest. Well please, please. done. Uh, well done. I'd like to do that. Um, Angie Stolzenberg is the head of the Community Action Program here in Logan County. <coughs> you, you'll have to excuse me, I think I'm a little She sick gets choked up being next to me is what yeah. happens. <laughs> no, go ahead. Anyway, she's going to introduce Andy. I'm really sorry. <laughs> All right, yeah. Excuse me, Jim. I thought I was having that effect on her, so I'm glad yeah. it's you. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about senior transportation and segue that right into public transportation. Mm -hmm. Now your senior transportation is a busy, busy thing. Yeah, definitely. I'd like a dime for every one of the vans I see come and go at the <laughs> hospital. Mm -hmm. How many? We would too. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, well, that's, <coughs> I, I wasn't that's aware I had to be camera ready today. Is the streaming live that I need to know Try about? that, dear. Yeah. <laughs> well, huh. Um, thank you. I don't really mean to affect you that way. <laughs> <laughs> Good grief. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what we do. You know, if you got a dime for every dime, mm -hmm. or for every van that comes to the hospital. It would help. Let's carry on with that. Mm -hmm. how, how many dimes are you getting that you're promised? Well, um, you know, that program, we, we run senior <coughs> transportation right now in Logan and Mason counties because Community Action, we actually serve six counties in central Illinois and sure. we do a variety of programs in each of those counties. But senior transportation is funded through us for um, Logan and Mason counties. And we do about 12,000 rides every year and we ask for a two dollar suggested donation no one's ever turned away for an in inability to pay right but we do always ask for a suggested donation because part of our grant requirement <coughs> is that we get local support that we ask for program income so that's what that donation goes for um, now the grant that we get the program operates it costs us about hundred and sixty thousand dollars a year to operate right now to maintain the vehicles well <coughs> now you're having that effect on me how much? I'm starting something. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hope you and I um, carry through the day, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it costs us about $160,000 a year to run the program. So, you know, just to put it in a nutshell, our, our grant that we get from Area Agency on Aging for Lincoln Land is about $45,000. So where's the difference? You know, the difference comes from, the difference comes from that program income, which isn't so great, you yeah, know. Much, um, we maybe get $15,000 a year um, well, a little bit more than that, but in those suggested donations I talked about. We receive uh, senior tax dollars from the Logan County Board, which we're very thankful for, so that helps supplement. Um, a lot of it comes from, you know, we raise money through Cheeseburger in Paradise. Yep. So we're, we're blessed that that event has taken off and been a huge success, and, and we can almost depend on about $20,000 a year coming from that. But if you're doing the math, um, we're still at a deficit. Every year we're at a deficit. So we, we're thankful for donations. Um, we do a couple general fundraisers um, through the year, just direct mail campaigns. We have folks that are generous and just contribute to community action to support programs that have shortfalls like this, which really our senior, our senior programs are the <laughs> ones that are so underfunded that we always have a shortfall in our senior programs. Are all of your vans adapted for uh, handicapped? Not uh, not all of them. We have five five wheelchair accessible vans, uh -huh. and um, those cost us about forty thousand dollars each. Yeah. And the lucky thing is that the Illinois Department of Transportation has a vehicle procurement program where you can apply to receive those vehicles. So luckily, that's not money coming straight out of the program's pocket. We actually have been able to keep that fleet up by continuously applying for those vehicles. But right now, we have five five wheelchair accessible vans. We have one, um, just a regular minivan that was donated by a collection of individuals and businesses. <laughs> we have a um, Chevy Malibu, 
which is just a, a regular sedan that was donated by the Woods Foundation a couple years ago. They do a um, lot of good. <coughs> yeah. They do a lot of good. Yeah, we were very thankful for that because up until that point, the sedan we were using had the rubber coming out from around the windows and the ceiling falling in and... You know, so we were very excited, and it's a hybrid, so that I think I bought some. that when you traded it in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, it had been, you know, pretty worse for wear. Tell me, Angie, uh, how many, for the one of a better word, clients do you serve? You, you serve six counties. That's remarkable. I did not realize that at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Well, with all of our programs, all of our programs combined, we see unduplicated which means we see them probably more than once but at least one time we see about 10,000 people in our six counties for a variety of programs. Now those ages will be from starting at well, what age? That's that's starting with pregnant moms all the way to seniors. Really? Yeah I mean because we have so many different kinds of programs that we we provide uh -huh. lots of different services everything from um, early Head Start which starts with a pregnant mom through a three-year-old Head Start which is the three to five-year-old um, preschool program then we have programs like just um, utility assistance and the senior programs we talked about the foster grandparent program Community services, food pantry, all kinds of things. Uh, you mentioned pregnant young ladies. Uh, mm -hmm. Does that mean that if they need to see medical care, that uh, they can take advantage of your transportation facilities that are available for them? Tra transportation is only for seniors, and that's why uh, we want to talk about public transportation. Uh, transportation, um, that money that we get, that Area Agency on Aging for Lincoln Land funding, that $45,000, which we're thankful for, but let's face it, it's a pittance <laughs> for a $150,000 program. Um, those dollars tie us to the Older Americans Act, which means you have to be 60 or older to use the services. And the alternative to that in in this county mm -hmm. has been to call a cab. Yeah. That was that was what we had. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to move from this, how I don't know, <laughs> into a public transportation program. Mm -hmm. How widely spread will that program be? Will that be just the two counties? Yes, and, and um, it, it goes back to, to the history of this. Um, first of all, I want to make it clear that the senior programs <coughs> have both the meal, um, the delivered meals, the congregate meals, and the transportation has nothing to do with income. It's all about you have to be 60 or older, or you have to have a spouse who's 60 or older. You know, if we allow the younger spouse. Um, to Even if it's a May-December marriage and you absolutely you married some <laughs> yep. sweet old fella. If you've decided to make it legal. <laughs> <laughs> if you got your sugar daddy, then you can get on the the community action senior you can have transportation a van. And a, and a seventy six year old is that correct? The what? You could have, a, in essence, you could have a forty year old. Yeah. Hey, if they're uh -huh. married, if they're in love, that's not. Yeah. That's, well, that's, that's got too I'm much sure on your plate to worry <laughs> about that, right? That's well, not my concern. Uh, yeah, they qualify. As long as you have one sixty or or uh, over. Yeah, I mean, day. yeah, together. I mean, they have to do it together. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't, sure yeah, that. yeah. The forty-year-old can't just be bop around all the time on their own. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the little young chick needs to take care of herself. You've got to stay <laughs> home and do her laundry. <laughs> yeah. I'm impressed that you have that. Answer. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Would you That's like good. to find that a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> no. Now, how in the world with your with your commitment to senior transportation, mm -hmm. which I. I fully understand is one fund mm -hmm. uh, and this has to be monumental problem in, in and of itself keeping the funds separate because mm -hmm. you can't you're not government you can't yes. borrow from Peter to pay Paul no we cannot uh, never ever or else well we, we certainly you know we're, we're uh, that's a really um I'm glad you bring that up because we're so confused with being a public entity. You know, we are the recipient, the grantee of several federal and state grants. We're a private not-for-profit. Uh -huh. So, you know, if we can if we can pay the bills at the end of the day, we actually could take an operating line of credit out or, you know, um, it wouldn't be smart business for us because, you know, we need to figure out where those... Well, I think there's something about paying those things back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Unfortunately, they make yeah. a sign. Yeah, so... Um, the, the, we, the reason this has all started is because back in the fall of 2007, this uh -huh. has been going on for a long time, the, uh, the FTA, the Federal Transit Administration, allocated dollars to expand what's called Section 5311, which people really don't care about this, but it's just basically a, t um, a pot of money 
that they want people to use to expand or create rural transportation. We all know that if yeah, you yes. live in a rural area and you don't have a car, and you know, this does, why does this apply to community action? Because of course, our mission is to help people who are low income. If you don't have the money, you know, it's very difficult to have enough money um, on a minimum wage job to be able to keep a, job, keep a car and maintain it and put gas in it with prices $4 a gallon. So that's why we're interested. But um, there's, you know, it's, it's really important in rural areas to have access to transportation, to get to jobs, to get to school, to get to the medical, to get to shopping. And, you know, you look at the economic development side of it. Businesses want people to get downtown or wherever it is that they want to go to, to shop. Um, you want tour, tourists to be, um, you know, once they get here to be able to get around if that's a possibility. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of advantages to having transportation available. Oh, my, yes. So, at the federal level, they decided this was going to be an initiative. So, they had this pot of money set aside and given specifically to rural counties. So, every county board chair in the state of Illinois got this letter back in the fall of 2007 saying, hey, we've got this, this Section 5311 money available to either create a transportation system, if you have one, to expand it, whatever. We need to get more services out to the people in the rural counties. And they gave you three years um, and yes we're a little over that but apparently that's okay they gave you three years to put this thing together and every year they banked this money for you and waited for you to get your act together and coordinate transportation to create a system because if you if you look at the way that money comes from the government there was no and I know everyone's shocked to hear this but there was no coordinated big picture thought process about, hey, we're going to give money to seniors, like we receive money for seniors. Um, we're going to give money to seniors, and then, hey, we're going to give money to these folks to transport this kind of person, and then we're going to give money to this for disabled people, and then we're going to give money to this entity to do, you know, the left-handed society, you yeah. know, whatever. And they had, um, all, they have all these little pots of money going all these different directions, all for transportation. Well, wouldn't it make sense if those entities would work together, put that money together, and serve everybody you know why why if we have a van going from downtown Lincoln to you know Walgreens can't anybody get on it it's going there anyway yeah. well that's what they're trying to break down all those barriers because wow. right now as it stands we couldn't do that because like I said before we were tied to this older Americans Act well and like you said it made sense to do it the new Mm -hmm. way that's probably why we haven't tried it yeah well and it, it's it's very complicated because that takes a lot of people and a lot of coordination and a lot of hey we like to do it the way we do it it's working for us we want to keep serving just our people you know there's a lot of walls to break down there so what happened like I said they got this letter um, they at the county level Mason and Logan County I sat down with the two county board members at the time Dick Logan was the county mm -hmm. board chair and um, Jim Griffin who's still the county board chair over in Mason County and we coordinated with the Rural Transit Assistance Center they, they have consultants that are in essence for free to this us. This is federal you said, is, um, did you? No, this is actually through Western Illinois University. It's an Illinois... Um, oh! Mm -hmm. It's an Illinois group that tries to coordinate all this. So we sat down and we said, okay, to get this started, you've got to go through a five-phase system, a five-phase process. And the first phase is to get a team leader and get a grit all the stakeholders that are interested in tra public transportation together in a room and talk about what are you doing now, what can we do, how can we coordinate. So um, it all started with me sitting in that room over in Havana and both of those guys looking at me going, hey, I think you need to be the team, <laughs> the team leader if this is going to go through. So Community Action decided that that would be the case. and. Um, we've gone through a whole lot of steps in, in the meantime. We gathered that group together, tried to get everybody at the table. We did a needs assessment survey. We did over 1,500 surveys to figure out would people use public transportation, where would they want to go, how much would they pay, when would they want to be there. Um, it's all taking this five-phase process is getting you to the point where you can apply for the dollars. A lot of logistics involved Whew, here. You're now, not a kid. <laughs> the geese are sitting here, I, I think I may be somewhat confused. Oh, don't comment about that, please. <laughs> so, seriously. Uh, there's a lady down in Coonsburg, for instance, mm -hmm. and she needs to, to go to Lincoln for whatever reason, medical mm -hmm. or shopping. 
Is she qualified to, uh, is she covered in this instance? Is Coonsburg in Logan or Mason counties? <laughs> yeah, I don't Coonsburg, know where right. that is. <laughs> All right, well, let's say Burton View. <laughs> Burton View. All right. Yeah, it, it's Logan, Logan and Mason, yes. Yeah, and, and uh, let's say Aunt Boo is out there mm -hmm. and she needs something up. Now, what, does she call you? Uh, I'm yeah. confused. Okay, well, because I because I guess I'm getting it's too into the details to of it. Um, maybe I should backtrack and make it a little more simple and say, so we've got this money set aside for us. Mm -hmm. And the only person who can be the grantee for it is a municipality. So Logan and Mason County had to enter into an agreement that they would work together. Logan County agreed to be the lead county. So the, the that federal dollar, those dollars are going to come through Logan County, and then they've chosen to work with Community Action as the administrator. And assuming our application gets approved, which we actually meet with IDOT tomorrow. The, um, oh, yeah. best wishes. Thank you. Um, we, we meet with them tomorrow to present our application. This is what we have, uh, this is what we're um, proposing. And so this will hopefully bring like the real part of it to life. Um, what we're proposing is that Community Action is the administrator, that we are the dispatcher, and that we're the operator. We're the only ones who were interested, um, who really were already doing services in Logan Mason County, who wanted to be an operator. So as of right now, that that's, would be the setup. Um, for the everyday person, no income, has nothing to do with income, somebody would call a phone number. It would, we would answer it as the dispatcher. Nine. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. It would be a different phone, direct number. And they would say, hey, I want to get someone and give us 24 hours advance notice, and we would try to get you there. And then we would charge you a fare. But if really? you were a senior, you would still qualify for that suggested donation. Now, do and you that's have kind to... kind of, hopefully, oh, the end enough. game. Yeah. Do you have to make your trip of the day on the public transportation within your own county? Or could you come from Mason City... To yep. ALMH pretend. Yep, absolutely. What what we what we're proposing is that it's um, we would actually we decided this group that got together decided it would be one fair for anything within Logan and Mason County. Now you talk about municipalities. Mm -hmm. Uh, would be at the head of this. Would this be the county boards then? Would that be who you'd be dealing with primarily? Community action would do all the work, but we would give you know. It, but it would technically go through Logan County. Logan County would get the check, send the check to us. We would submit our expenses to Logan County. They would submit to <coughs> IDOT. IDOT would give them the money. They'd give it, but okay. they'd reimburse us. Now, to put this in perspective, if a couple are living in Mason City or outside Mason, somewhere in Mason County, mm -hmm. and they need to get to the hospital here, mm -hmm. then they can avail themselves of those services and like within 20, like they make an appointment 24 hours ahead. Yep. Isn't it? What if you get sick quick? Well, it's a demand response system. It's not, is, a it's not a taxi service. Uh -huh. And, yeah. you know, of course we're only going to have certain capacity because I haven't even talked about the dollars and how the reimbursement goes for all this. To us or to whom? To you, I, oh, just, I, just, well. I haven't, I haven't even, got, you know, I haven't even gotten into like the actual kind of money we have coming in to pay for this program. But you know, like with anything else, we we aren't going to be able to say yes to everybody. Yeah, There's going to be, question. you know, four dollars a, a gallon for gas. I bet a lot of people are going to be interested in a potential oh, yeah. cheap ride to, Goodness, um, man. you know, to go shopping or go to work every day. I, you know, we cannot obviously guarantee that we can do that. We only have so many drivers. We only have so much. Money to pay them we only have so much money to put the gas in the in the vehicles yeah. and we only have so many vehicles so will it be all n new vehicles then that you'll bring oh, in this program? you're going no. to be able to use <laughs> we don't have that kind of money yeah. well yeah I yeah wondered. we're gonna use um, what we're proposing is using of course what we have existing except for now anybody can get on those vehicles and then we've also requested through that vehicle procurement program I told you about that mm -hmm. IDOT thing um, we've requested a 12 passenger bus uh -huh. because um, typically the bus isn't going to work because typically you don't have in a rural area that many people who want to no. go to the same spot. Right. But if you want to start doing um, contracts with other groups that do have maybe bigger clientele then you know you need that option. So, Like, like for instance, can you well, uh, before we go in, for instance, uh, may I take a, a, an interruption here because uh, there's a program called Commercial Breaks that needs to be addressed. I wondered so, when you were going to tell me to shut up. You just kept <laughs> letting me talk. 